Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today for episode three of three on algae. So far we've talked about what the heck this stuff is. You'd think it was just green slime, but it's way more complicated than that. We've also talked about how algae may have set up the reason for life on Earth, and also the reason a lot of things have died on Earth, and also why we may have sexes. We haven't talked about how it can kill you and other things, and if algae is one of the dominant forms of life on this planet. But today we're gonna talk about how algae might save humanity. It's gonna be super cool. Make sure you stick around. If you haven't subscribed before, make sure that you're subscribed because we need your subscription. Because that way we know that you like us and you know we have egos. No, but really it helps make the show better. Earlier we harped on algae pretty hard. The last episode, sorry algae, we really knocked you around. It can have a lot of negative effects, but they're usually related to stuff that we've done, right? Overfishing and things, you'll have to go back if you wanna know more. But there are different organisms that have a symbiotic relationship with algae, and it's very beneficial. And it can help not just those organisms, but in the end, algae can help us as a species as well. For instance, lichen or fungi. Many scientists believe that algae benefits from fungi or lichen because it lives on it and it's unable to dry out when the lichen or fungi is around. And in return, the fungi get a solid food supply through photosynthesis. And as we kind of mentioned earlier, algae and coral have a symbiotic relationship. Yes, that can go very wrong, causing lots of problems. Again, if you haven't listened to the episode from earlier, make sure you do that. Single-celled algae, called zooxanthellae, live within most types of coral polyps. The coral provides the algae a nice protected place so that it can live, super cool little house, and for coral, they get compounds they need for photosynthesis. And they repay the coral by helping remove their waste. But most importantly, the zooxanthellae give coral glucose, glycerol, and amino acids, again, through that photosynthesis thing. The coral uses those to make proteins, fats, and carbohydrates to produce calcium carbonate, which then builds more coral. And that is why it is a symbiotic relationship. And they also give coral their color, by the way, which is amazing. If you've never seen it in real life, go somewhere and go dive and look at coral. Don't touch it though. You're gonna ruin it. Remember how the zooxanthellae is expelled by the coral and how it looks all bland and white? That's bad? Right, we want the coral and the zooxanthellae to work together. But it isn't just coral that this specific algae has a symbiotic relationship with. They also work with sponges and sea anemones and jellyfish, all sorts of things in the ocean benefit from algae. Lastly though, and this was super cool, Green sea slugs. Sea slugs are green because of algae. They get a nice camouflage from the algae, but they get an even crazier benefit from it. Some sea slugs are able to live for months at a time without eating because they feed on sunlight like a plant because of a symbiotic relationship with algae. Early last year, a study published in the Biological Bulletin explained that they found evidence of some of the emerald green slugs chromosomes, which came from genes of the algae that it ate. The genes made it so the sea slug could have the photosynthetic processes happening within its body, so it didn't need any freaking food. Basically, it ate it and took its power. That's so cool. Symbiotic relationships are awesome. Some algae, again, and I teased this a little bit earlier, do have human benefits as well. For example, you could eat algae, and it would be considered healthy. I mean, I'm not saying go do that right now. Like, don't grab a spoon and go to your nearest swimming hole or whatever and try and grab some algae. Don't do that. There's something called spirulina. Spirulina is a microalgae and we have been eating it for centuries. It's a potent superfood. Many lifestyle personalities call it a superfood as well as a quote, miracle from the sea, which is some pretty high praise. Basically what this spirulina is, is a blue green algae, which if you remember from earlier is a prokaryotic simple algae that grows in oceans and saltwater lakes, mostly lakes located in subtropical climates. So the Aztecs used to harvest this stuff, and it's still harvested in parts of Africa. According to a study published in the journal Cardiovascular Therapeutics, which might seem like a weird place to see algae studies, but bear with me here. It used to be considered a plant because it's rich in green pigment from its ability to form photosynthesis, but it got moved into the bacteria kingdom. Spirulina kind of grows in these microscopic spirals that stick together, so it's easy to harvest. The CEO of a company called Smart Microfarms, Robert Henriksen, claims that microalgae are 20 times more productive than conventional crops, and they don't require much water, so they don't compete for agricultural land. On top of that, we can eat it, remember. So remember that overpopulation problem we've been talking about on DNews Plus before? You could have algae for lunch, and it would be so much better than trying to find beef 
or even traditional plants. Although, it's a pretty mild taste. They actually use it to color gum and candy and stuff. But you could eat it. The National Institutes of Health say more research is needed to see if it actually helps treat health conditions. But in terms of consuming it, it is an antioxidant. And some claim that it has tons of other health benefits, like it's rich in protein and vitamins and minerals, and again, antioxidants which help protect cells from DNA damage. On top of that, algae, as you may recall from earlier on, is not just one thing. Mostly throughout this series, we've been talking about it in terms of its very small cellular form. You've probably had seaweed. It's pretty common if you eat food from regional cuisines like sushi, which makes sense, you know, it's very popular in Japan because they harvest it right out of the ocean. But they have the right idea because seaweed is rich in essential vitamins and minerals and it's very low in fat. It absorbs minerals directly from the sea. A typical serving of dried kombu seaweed has more calcium than a cup of milk. It's rich in iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, vitamin K, vitamin E, B12, riboflavin, thiamine. It's high in soluble fibers. In fact, according to a review published in September 2013 in the edition of the International Journal of Biological Macromolecules, that is a real journal, a major polysaccharide component of brown seaweed called fucoidin may actually cause death in cancer cells and prevent cancer from spreading and invading healthy cells too. Seaweed could help cure and prevent cancer. Of course, way more research is needed, so don't go running around and shout that from the mountaintops. On top of all those things, as we round out this series on DNews Plus, algae helps keep us alive literally every moment of the day. Algae oxygenates our planet. It's part of the reason that it caused that mass extinction that I mentioned earlier. Scientists hope that algae could help save the world from greenhouse gases through the beauty of photosynthesis. It sucks in carbon dioxide and it outputs oxygen, right? They hope that algae can remove greenhouse gases and create also new oil reserves. Since some of the oil we burn with fossil fuels today was likely from algae that sunk to the bottom of the ocean and slowly turned into crude oil. So you can take algae and get that energy out of it by turning it into biodiesel and vegetable oil. There's actually a company called Alginol, which has patented technology to use algae to produce ethanol. It uses the blue-green, the simple algae, and photosynthesis to convert carbon dioxide and seawater into sugar, which is then converted into biomasses and ethanol. Algae is 50 times more productive as biofuel than a traditional crop like corn. It doesn't require nearly the water or the land resources because it's just smaller. It's a small single-celled organism. It's very efficient and it doesn't need any agricultural land, so we're not competing with traditional food sources to make this energy product. And this is D News Plus, so we gotta go a little bit crazy here, but algae could also help humans breathe underwater. According to a study published in early 2011 in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, future humans might eventually be able to get algae implants and also, like the green sea slug, use algae symbiotically. Works the same way as a virus. Stay with me here. Viruses invade an organism, integrate its DNA into the DNA of the host, right? The scientists were curious if microbes could do that too. So the crazy biologists decided to study the relationship between algae and salamanders. Algae has been known to enter the developing salamander egg and become a part of the salamander fetus. It does this before the egg has any kind of, you know, immune system to kick it out. Then the algae DNA shows up in adult salamanders, which then they pass on to their young. The algae is mutating the salamander. The reason that this happens is because of a symbiotic relationship between the salamander and the algae. The algae ate the nitrogen in the embryo's waste, the salamander embryo. And while the embryo then would feed on the oxygen from the algae's waste. Basically they were eating each other's poop, which is super gross, poop emoji, heart emoji. This means that algae could be sort of an internal source of oxygen. It became a symbiotic relationship and we might be able to do that too. They're gonna try to have it live within vertebrate tissues as well. Wouldn't it be cool if you could jump in a lake and your little algae started you know, giving you oxygen? That'd be amazing. It's kind of amazing to think about scientists studying something that could be single-celled, could be multicellular, but it's some of the oldest life on our planet and we're still being schooled 
in what it can do for us today. I mean, could you imagine taking something that's 2.7 billion years old, embedding it into a new organism, and having it be able to breathe underwater? Science can, that's why science is awesome. Earlier we did talk about fishing and how humans live using the ocean. There's a great show, you've probably heard of it, called Deadliest Catch. It's voiced by Bombay Mike Rowe, he's awesome. You might wanna learn more about it, maybe you do, I don't know. I like watching it on my phone or on my tablet, and you can do that too by downloading the Discovery Go app. There's a link down in the description, you can watch Deadliest Catch or any other Discovery show right on your phone anytime, it's super awesome, and some of them are even free. So check out the Discovery Go app, let us know what you think. Again, link in the description. What did you know about algae before <laughs> versus what you know now? Like, did you know anything about it before? Because I sure didn't. And now I think algae is super cool and I want to know a lot more about it. Let us know down in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in to D News Plus this week. We'll see you next time.